If you feel frustrated because you don't know how to create a glow effect in Photoshop and you spend a lot of time searching for the best photo that you can use, I'm going to share with you the five step process that I use that will make this effect much easier for you to understand. So you can take your photo from this to this in minutes. And trust me when I say this, it's not just about Photoshop editing. In fact, everything starts with the idea or the concept. And this is the first step in the process. So in my case, I grabbed my notebook and I wrote down what elements I want to combine. So I wanted to have a cute animal in my image and the first that came into my mind was a squirrel. And then I thought, okay, this is already a cute animal. But then I needed a thing which is actually the second step and the most important thing of the process. It's actually a question. What glows in the image? Because, you know, you always need an object that creates light in your images, that casts light on objects around it, but also shadows. So I started to think, what object can I introduce in my image that is relevant to a squirrel? The answer came pretty quickly, actually. A peanut. Because squirrels love peanuts. Big peanuts. This was all I needed for the moment. I established the most important elements in my image. A squirrel and a big peanut that will glow. So I immediately jumped to step number three in the process, which is the most time consuming. Step number three is the images slash elements research. It could even take you hours to do this and you know that. In fact, drop me a comment and tell me if you can relate to this problem. You have to do this research on the stock photo websites that could take hours, like I said. The other way is to create those photos by yourself, but sometimes that's even harder depending on your idea. So in other words, the squirrel hunting just started for me at step number three. I looked at many, many, many images until I found this one that I really liked. So here's the secret when choosing images. If you want the easiest way to do a glow effect, the best images are the ones where the light is coming from somewhere behind the subject because you already have some rim light on the squirrel as you can see here, for example, but also you have shadows, so you don't have to spend time creating these. You only need to make them look even better than now and adjust them. For the peanut, it was way more easier than I thought. Envato Elements has, for example, a lot of 3D elements that you can rotate in any angle and then download that image with a transparent background. It's awesome this way. This video is not sponsored by Envato, but I am affiliated with them because I use their website. So if you want to try them out, check the link in my description because in some countries, they still offer a seven day free trial. Step number four in the process is something that you need to figure out on your own because it depends on the image and elements that you're using. It's about creating the composition. It's better to define it at this point because you'll have a much clearer idea for how you want the crop to be on the main image and to position the elements for the final look, especially if you have more than two elements. In my case, I wanted to go with a vertical composition, so I chose four by five using the crop tool and I made the working area much bigger while keeping the squirrel on the bottom third for a good composition. And the very, very important thing I've done here was to enable the content to wear at the top because I wanted to fill in the empty areas with the help of the AI. In the case of this image, in my opinion, it did an amazing job. Then I inserted the peanut. I made it a smart object to preserve the quality in case I changed the size multiple times. I found a nice position for it somewhere in the upper third of the image. Obviously, I kept it bigger than in reality because it grabs attention and it's way funnier. And then I continued with step number five in this process. So we have an idea. We know what will glow in the image. We researched and collected the elements. We decided on the composition. And now it's time for step number five, which is the editing. So let me show you what are the steps that I usually do when I want to create a glow effect. But first, if you think this video is helping you and it's valuable, now is the right time to press the thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you're not already. Let's rename this layer to peanut and then you can use whatever selection method you want, but you need to make the selection for the squirrel and the branch. This is the first thing. You can simply use the quick selection tool and then click on select subject. Photoshop will create a selection for you. And if it's not perfect, you can refine it using the quick selection or any other tool that you prefer. 
Of course, if it's a fluffy thing that you're selecting, entering the selected mask is a must because when you have fur or hair, there's always room to improve the selection. And the refine edge brush will help you with this. You just need to paint over the edges here and it will do the job in this case. At the end, just output this to new layer with layer mask and now you have everything on its own layer. The peanut, the squirrel with the branch and the original image which we will consider the background in this case. Go and add a color lookup adjustment and from this drop down choose night from day and this will darken the background. Then you can hold down alt and drag this layer on top of the squirrel layer as a duplicate. Make sure you clip this adjustment to the layer below otherwise it will affect all layers that are below this one and it will darken your background twice. You don't want that so by clipping it it will affect only the first layer below. Let's jump to the peanut now. Not to eat it, I'm gonna let the squirrel to do that. So I'm going to add some contrast first by adding a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to clip this one to the peanut and then create some contrast for it because it will help me to achieve a better result when I will add the glow. Now the next step is to select the curves and the peanut, right click and convert them into a smart object so they become one layer and then make a duplicate of this new layer then change its blending mode to linear dodge this blending mode is making the bright parts of the peanut even brighter from filter you'll need to go to blur gaussian blur and then try to find a value here that creates some glow right at the edges of the object 30 is fine for me and after you finish this step you need to duplicate this layer three more times but not all at once Watch how I do it so it makes it easier for you to understand. I'm going to duplicate the layer with Ctrl J and because it's a smart object, I can double click the Gaussian blur and modify the value anytime that I want. So instead of this value, I will put 100. Okay, make a duplicate again, enter the Gaussian blur. I raise the value even more here to 300 and make one more duplicate, then change the Gaussian blur to this one as well to a much higher value like 600 in my case. All these values will be different if you use another image because it depends on the resolution. But you get the idea, right? You need to make the glow effect softer and softer and bigger and much bigger each time you duplicate the layer. Also, you don't need to stick to four layers in total. You could try with three or five if you want. It's completely up to you. The technique is the same. So if you want, you can select these five layers now, group them and rename the group to peanut. Now you'll need to add some rim light on the squirrel and the branch. What I like to do is to add a hue saturation layer. Make sure you position it right above the color lookup and use the alt key or this button to clip it to the layer below. Check the colorize and bring the saturation all the way up. Change the hue so it matches the color of the glow from the peanut and then enter the blending options. There's a small trick here at the underlying layer. You can take the shadow slider to the right and hold ALT to split these two handles. You will create a softer transition. This way you can limit the layer to be visible only on the bright parts and in my case it's exactly the rim light. After this I can grab the brush and paint with black on the layer mask in some areas where I want to bring back some of the cooler bluish tones on the squirrel. In these areas the light from the glow cannot be visible. And I do the same thing for the lower part of the branch as well. And of course, if I hold shift and click on the layer mask, I can disable it and re-enable it. So you can see it really makes a difference on the image. And if you think the light is not powerful enough right now, the easiest way to make it brighter is to just duplicate this hue saturation layer with Control J. And if it's too much for the second one, you can always dial it down using this opacity option right here. After looking at this result, I can say that in some areas there is more room for a brighter rim light on the squirrel, but on the branch as well. So with an exposure adjustment right on top of the color lookup layer, I can increase the brightness, invert the layer mask with Control I and paint with a white brush over the edges where I want more brightness. I also added some dust particles in the scene for a bit more atmosphere. The blending mode for this one was set to screen to get rid of the dark areas and I also added a layer mask because with the help of a white brush I revealed the particles only in certain areas 
and this created an entirely different mood for the whole scene. And a small trick that I like, this is a really small trick that I like, <laughs> is to select all these layers, convert them into a smart object, and then apply the camera raw filter. This allows me to add some more texture to the scene, maybe tweak the colors a bit, and use the dehay slider to add just a bit of a dreamy look to the whole image. Now, you should watch this video next because I explain every single step that I do for selections, dust particles, and the camera raw filter. You'll find some goodies there, so let me know what you think about it in the comments.